Hello and welcome back to EVE Online with me, Mark from Dadex, and here I am in the Drake, the Kaldari Tech 1 Battle Cruiser. It's a ship I was using about eight years ago to run level 3 missions with uh, my oldest alt and a ship I still use regularly and always enjoy using. Alongside it in the Kaldari Battle Cruiser lineup, we've got the Ferox, which uses medium hybrid turrets, we've got our Drake. And then there's the Naga, which uses large hybrid turrets, a bit of a specialist, but we'll have a look at that one day. You can put a lot of DPS out when it wants to. But there's our Drake. We'll just check. You don't need many skills, really. It's not a long skill train to get into a battle cruiser. All I'm going to say is make sure you've trained the skills you need to fit one effectively. That's always so much to check, when you're, especially when you're aspiring to a ship. Take that into account. You need to fit it. And talking of which, here is our Swiss Army Drake, so called because I think I've got this figured out to be pretty independent in the wormholes and, and do anything and rep up and, and keep going until you're full of loot and treasure. Now in high slots we've got the Arbalest Heavy Missile Launchers loaded with standard Scourge ammo. In the rig slots here we've got the two extenders and one EM screen reinforcer to fill that Kaldari EM hole. We've got the core probe launcher one with sisters probes in it. You don't really need them if all you're looking for is wormholes. We've got the enduring micro warp drive. We've got a target painter. We'll talk about that in a bit more. We've got two of the invulnerability fields, uh, tech twos and two large shield extender. They're all tech two. You could probably get away with tech one on that tank. Though to be honest, if you are flying Kaldari battle cruisers without tech two shield skills, then uh, you might want to rethink your training queue a little bit. That's my advice to you. We've got the two Ballistic Control Unit 2s and the Damage Control 2 in the bottom, but it's the Shield Power Relay 2 here that's really key to this fit. I wanted to make sure this Drake was absolutely self-sufficient and forget we've got a station in the system, and it is this uh, increasing the passive regen of the shields that really does make the difference. It's not a huge increase, it goes up from 39 to 50 hit points per second recharge. And we've got just shy of 300 DPS out of the old bird, and if we uh, actually simulate the fit, but the two invulnerability fields with just under 80,000 hit points and very good resistances across the board, which is what we need here facing these sleepers and their omni damage, omni tank malarkey. Now we've got about two minutes, it says there on the cap. Uh, without the micro warp drive running, we are cap stable, but not by much. But we'll see that during the fight. Anyway, we've got five Hornet 2s in the old drone hold. And they're useful for taking down frigates and such, which the heavy missiles have trouble applying to. And while we're on the subject of damage application, this particular fit has a target painter, which enhances the signature radius of what it's painting. Now, in the hold here, I'll just have a little tidy up. I've got some bits here from where I've been experimenting with the fit. We've got the ballistic control unit 2 there, which I hadn't before I had the shield relay power relay on. We've got missile guidance computer and we've got the missile precision scripts. They're basically another way of making the heavy missiles apply better to smaller targets. Now, as I said, the target painter, if we look at the details, in his attributes, he will show us what he does. And then we're going to go and look on the uh, missile guidance computer. So just to explain how these modules work, because uh, some of you guys may not have even really used them or have any experience of them at all. Now the target painter, you literally just switch that on to whatever you're locked onto. It's going to increase the target radius by 27, sorry, the Shignitzer radius by 27.5%. Now the missile guidance computer, if you just run this module with no scripts in it, you're going to get a 4% bonus to missile velocity, a 4% bonus to missile flight time, which is basically bonuses to the missile's range. And you're going to get the uh, minus 5% bonus and plus 5% bonus to uh, explosion radius and explosion velocity, which basically is an increase in application of the missile's damage. Now, if you actually run a script into the guidance computer, say we'll have a look at the range script first, it doubles the bonuses that are going to apply to the range and it basically removes the bonuses that then apply to the application. So that basically takes it one way or the other, doubling the effect of one boost switching off the effect of the other and the precision script ex works in exactly the same way opposite so it removes the range bonuses and it doubles the uh, application bonuses um, most mid slot modules that run scripts of some form will work on that kind of basis they'll do two things if you're just running them or specialize in one of those two things when you run the script 
Back to the cargo hold, the selection of modules in here combined with the mobile depot means that in between sites we can go off to a safe point, deploy the mobile depot, refit for maybe a bit more scanning, could try to hack a relic site if we wanted to, we got some spare drones, we could also bring salvaging drones, some salvagers, repair the hull, sorry, the armour, I haven't brought a hull repairer, hopefully things won't get that bad. Shield repairer is a choice, you can sit there and repair your shield, but then you've got to sit and wait for your capacitor to recharge. But the Drake's bonuses, as you can see here, Per level of the Kaldari Battlecruiser skill, we get plus 4% to all shield resistances and plus 10% to kinetic missile damage from heavy missiles and heavy assault missiles. We can fit one Command Burst module and get a 50% bonus to its range and we get a further 25% bonus for our missile range through the missile velocity bonus that the hull gets. Overall, with uh, our launchers and the standard Scourge ammo we get a 59 kilometer range on our heavy missiles which is very good now let's get out and about there are three types of regular combat site that spawn in a c2 wormhole the first of which is this one the ruins of enclave cohort 27 and we're on the eve uni wiki page to get all of the information we could possibly want these pages are brilliant i recommend this wiki for all of your uh, pve needs the spawn here will vary slightly, sometimes you'll get the battleship in the first wave, sometimes it will be the last spawn, sometimes there won't even be a battleship. Perimeter hangar is another variation on the same theme of cruisers, battleships and frigates. The attack ranges can be a key piece of info you get, so you know how far away to get from a ship so it can't apply damage. But it's the perimeter checkpoint we're actually going to run today. The hardest of these three I think, certainly with this ship and this fit entirely because it has these two sentry towers that are there when you first arrive as part of the first spawn with a 250 kilometer range and a relentless onslaught of uh, regular damage so they need to go down first also note there they have a very small signature radius so the target painter needs to go on them not the frigates i didn't actually realize how tiny towers were until i saw the stats on these pages but check the damage types take look they're going to give you check the weapon systems are going to use you is it worth trying to break their tracking if they're shooting at you at big turrets etc so here we are but outside the station remember we are now in a wormhole we've got no friends here today um so it really is just us and the wormhole the station is handy for lots of reasons as i say the idea of this fit is that we are actually okay. self-sufficient we can just move on to the next site maybe with a little break in between uh, to refit and do some resting or top up the drone bay or whatever but the d-scan is going to be our friend continuously throughout this little adventure i'm obviously i'm in a drake i'm not likely to get away very quickly if something gets too close to me on grid and get can get a tackle on me that's something we're going to incorporate in the way we play the site it also ties in with the way we want to be controlling range on the rats at least to some degree because generally speaking the closer the rats get to you the more damage they're going to do to you so unless you're fitted and ready for that kind of a fight best to keep your range and uh, make sure you're managing the range as best you can anyway here we are we are now on grid and as i hope i've made very clear the priority targets are the two towers now that everything's out of range for now so we're going to get range on one tower and we're going to start killing it we're going to get the target painter on there i've done an experiment and it's probably about 20 percent more damage application we're getting by running the target painter on that sentry tower in closing our range we're actually just checking so zooming out of view as i've shown you before to see where the rest of the rats are so we don't really want to fly into the whole crowd of them we're going to fly into the range of this one whilst kind of pulling range as much as we can on the rest of the pack just for now till we get settled in and then as they come into us we can start picking them off use our drones on the frigates and then we'll go to work on the cruisers do remember that the cruisers can be the trigger in fact on this site they are the trigger they are marked with the red x's on those eve wiki pages i forgot to mention that um, if there are two of them it's the last one you kill that will be the trigger for the next spawn but spawn management is key if you kill the trigger too early you're going to get a double spawn really to fight that can get a little bit much so i've got my drones out on the frigate now that's they're coming in towards me they've come within my drone control range you'll notice i've brought out one slightly dented drone by accident but that's okay do keep an eye on your drones they will get aggroed on at some stage of this if necessary pull them in uh but we'll see just keep an eye on it you don't want to suddenly have no drones lose that dps isn't really very good but as long as you're keeping an eye on things here and you don't let them get too close to you as you will see just keep an eye on the shield bar 
basically it wobbles up and down it does go down obviously to a certain degree over the course of the mission but it's the regen that kind of keeps us where we need to be which is in a relatively good safe place now with those twin invulnerability fields running and the target painter running we are cap stable as i said but there's times during the running of the site that we're going to burn using a micro warp drive now that is going to if we do that tip us over the edge a little bit so as we go through you'll see how i mitigate that by uh, reducing the capacity use as and when we can during the lifetime of the site i'm just going to speed this up guys please i'd like a comment would you prefer me just to kind of cut lumps of this out would you prefer me to speed it up as i do now and kind of narrate over it there's me putting out my mobile tractor unit i don't use those as an orbit point on these sites um, because you do need to move around quite a bit as you'll see or would you like me just to leave the video in kind of real time and leave me much more time to talk nonsense to you? Um, let me know. No, let me know what your preference is. Obviously, I don't want these videos to be too long and just having 10 minutes of it, literally me going round and round stuff, killing it. If that's really all that's going on, why should we take up our time doing that? We can move on to something much more interesting. But now we've got those two sentry towers down, really. We just manage our way into killing these things by just controlling the range. Let them come into us now. What I am going to do here, I've talked about the capacitor and you can see, although theoretically we're cap stable, it is running a little bit low. So I'm going to turn off one of the invulnerability fields there because the incoming DPS has dropped enough for us to be able to do so. And as you can see, the shield level is staying pretty much stable. I've turned off the target painter. I'm basically taking my time. Everything's getting a little bit more recharge time ready for the next spawn also if anyone does land on grid i'm gonna want to make sure they can't get a tackle on me this isn't really a very fast getaway ship at the best of times so i'm nicely off hopefully the warping point although of course they could warp on quite close to me they could be cloaked and uh, approaching me slowly now in their tengu but uh if i can if i, I might want to burn away just to make sure they can't get a tackle on me before i warp out Although firing your micro warp drive whilst you're trying to warp out can really slow you down if you have some alignment to do. So don't be reliant on that. There's me just updating which one was the trigger. So I made sure I killed them in the right order in this spawn. And it's the protector that's the trigger here. But the two escorts aren't coming within drone control range. So I put the drones on the patroller and they can slowly nibble him down while I let the missiles and the target painter get on with dealing with the escorts. And there's one getting hit as we speak. Beautiful. And once these guys are down, we're on to the last spawn, which is going to be some frigates, which your drones will be able to handle, and a battleship, which as long as we don't let it get any stupid damage on us, we're just going to nibble away at over time. As you can see there, if you want to freeze frame that, just to see their resistances and their damage types. They do very slightly ship to ship on a site, but overall a site is always going to be omni damage and kind of omni tank when you're dealing with the sleepers. Just doing a little bit of admin there, don't want to look too complacent, but I did have time. And no, this alpha count, obviously not Flyer Prospector. Um, Someone is delivering it to me so I can pass it on to somebody else in the wormhole later. Anyway, here's the final spawn. The three frigates, the drones are going to take care of them. Do take, keep an eye on your drones while these three frigates are on grid because they may start munching them at some stage, as is happening there, in fact, and just have the missiles on that battleship the whole time and uh, just start grinding him down. He's got quite a lot of big hit point pull. Just start nibbling. His weapons hit out to about 42 kilometers, so I do try to kind of pull range on, on him a little bit, but I, I'm too slow. He's actually a little bit quicker than me, that battleship. The Drake is not the fastest boat in the world at all. So that doesn't really work, but what I do know is he, he's shooting at me with very big laser turrets and you can actually see them flashing past me. So if I can keep a bit of traversal on him, that's going to make it harder for those to apply to me. So um, that's part of the plan. You don't want to be flying straight away or straight at something that's shooting at you with big guns. Because, oh, and then you can see there, I'll put the display up. You can see the traversal, you can see the speed that he's moving. And... Uh, oh, does it? I could burn again with the micro warp drive to pull range, but I'm still not that very comfortable on the capacitor. So uh, I am taking it a little bit easy. As you can see, we're barely down below half shield and the regen is kind it is keeping up with it. But that's probably the worst of it now. All those frigates are gone. It's just us on the battleship. And uh, happy days. Now, that battleship is also hitting us with missiles, but um, we can't do much about messing with the application of them and get out of range. But here is how you get into your combat log if you want to know the nitty gritty. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you damage type in here. But if you want to just a record of your whole fight of you hitting them and them hitting you, 
and uh, see how your manoeuvres etc made a difference to how damage was applying then there's all the info right there should you want it and our drones are chipping away over there slowly into the battleship making the big difference of course and it's just a matter of time now so keep an eye on your d-scan hopefully you don't get jumped at the end if you do warp away for whatever reason i have noticed if it's only the battleships left on the grid um, they may well not be there when you come back i've noticed that i did one of my very earliest attempts on on one of the sites i was uh, about to probably die so i walked away repaired came back and uh, the battleship had already gone doesn't make a huge difference to the overall loot on the site but we'll talk about that when that is appropriate but there he is he's going down now all the drones are safe we didn't have to overheat any modules which is great so um, we can just go off onto the next site we can go to our safe spot regen everything up but in our case we've gone home and put the drake to bed we brought the cormorant out because we can to do the salvaging um, and we'll see what the results of that are shortly as i said using the mobile depot you could go off to your safe spot fit some salvages or put some salvage drones in the drone hold and uh, use those for salvaging or you can decide not to salvage and just move on to the next site it's really up to you so uh, these destroyer salvages i love them with those rigs in the mid slots i've made a video all about it for you i'll link that in the description take these down very quickly obviously i'm running the footage at four times speed again but i'm not here for very long overall this whole site and the salvaging takes about 20 minutes so bear that in mind in terms of the income everyone likes to know about isk per minute isk per hour this is taking about 20 minutes so let's see what we've got in here then shall we so we're on the last wreck just waiting for our salvages to crack their way into there and then we'll know exactly how much we've got come on boys don't make me set all of them on you there you go 3.2 million isks worth of salvage from the wrecks and inside the mtu 12.9 million so just over 16 million loot and salvage in about 20 minutes don't forget to pick up the mobile tractor unit and just in case you do forget to pick it up make sure you bookmarked it i'm deleting my bookmark there just to save admin confusion later on and off we go back to our little home base here um obviously if we were roaming we'd head off to the next site in our drake into the next wormhole I am going to go and do a bit of a roam one day in my Drake, see how I get on. I'm actually going to do one in the venture after that mad little venture video, see if it can hack some more relic sites and get some more gas. I also spent the whole night in a venture in a, a shattered wormhole, wormhole in the week. And uh, I came out of there with 75 millions worth of gas, which was all very good. But anyway, we're going to dock up all safe and sound. As I say, I really did want to make sure I had a fit that um, wasn't dependent on having a station in your wormhole at all. So I hope you agree that this is a, a Drake that can do the job for you. Just putting all our lovely loot away. Let's see how much we've collected in the last few days. That's a nice, healthy amount of loot in just over a hundred mil and that's what i made by doing a few of those sites um sussing them out to get this video made for you so uh that's some more breakages paid for when i'm bouncing around in low sec hey anyway right guys i'm going to leave you there please leave it a comment especially about how you like the combat and the site clearing shown um look your preferences or any questions or suggestions you might have please subscribe if you want to stay in touch click the notification bell if you want to know when a new video comes out Leave us a like, of course, if you have indeed liked it. For now, fly brave, fly safe. Remember, even is believing, and goodbye.